Hi, huge movie fanatic Nate coming right back at you with another one of these random. I bet you had no idea what the hell was gonna I was gonna review today videos because uh, I watched. Oh, I think I already said it in my last video. I watched three movies yesterday because it was kind of stormy and stormy weather. Um, and this was one of them along with Tin Man. Tin Tin Man. <laughs> this was one of them. You can tell by the price that I got it months ago because it's it's a three dollar half price books as opposed to now they luckily now they have the clearance rolly rack movie DVDs two dollars which I'm uh, very very grateful for that's flipping fantastic so I mean this was on the you know the rolly rack and clearance three dollars and I'm like I never seen it because I'm not a huge war <clears throat> I mean, I'm not a war, you know, I don't like war at all. And I'm not a big war movie person. Although I can say, obviously, that the best mo war movies are anti-war movies. And, and this, you know, I guess kind I guess, I guess this is kind of, it's not so much anti-war as just anti, anti, anti what happens in this movie. So, it's really, I don't think, I don't think you could really necessarily call it anti-war. It's just anti-rape or something. But like I said, like I've said before, I don't read the back boxes just because I don't want it. You know, I don't want to. I don't want it to ruin anything. And the reason I got this is it's just like, oh, Ryan De Palma. It's like 1989. Michael J. Fox. You know, kind of like with Tom Cruise and stuff. I've been, you know, if I find him for three or two dollars, I've been picking up old Michael J. Fox stuff just because he's like one of them actors that I grew up with who really, have, really isn't doing much anymore so I'm going to place this in the pile so I don't keep looking down at it because that's kind of just dumb so I watched it last night and I was just like you know I mean I like Brian De Palma generally and I don't know it really didn't necessarily except for like a few sequences feel like necessarily Brian De Palma except for like that one well it wasn't that long but like a steady cam POV shot of like the Guys trying to, excuse me, blow up Michael J. Uh, Fox or whatever. That that looked, that was like a Brian De Palma Steadicam POV shot. But you wouldn't really necessarily even know that the rest of the movie is Brian De Palma. So it takes place in Vietnam War, you know, yippee. <laughs> uh, yeah, just to, I, I won't go into my feelings about the Vietnam War, or any war for that matter. Um, but you probably know them. Not pleased about war. Uh, I'll leave it at that. So, like I say, I'm not really. Why did I buy it then? Because it was three dollars. Was Brian De Palma. It was. Uh, I'm not going to look at the cover, but Michael J. Fox. And it was '89, and I'm like, well, let's just see this. You know, that's why I bought it. But I'm generally not a war person. This is a war movie person, even if it's anti-war. And I didn't know what this movie was about, so I put it in. Of course, it starts with your normal stuff in the beginning scenes got like a you know we're taking fire we're taking fire the VC VC and it's just I don't know like this dumb war scene and Michael J. Fox gets saved by Sean Penn's character and anyway let me just tell you the whole what the whole movie's about and I was really <clears throat> kind of it was a depressing movie depressing movie and one that uh, you know to be honest having watched the whole thing I'm like did it even warrant being made is kind of what I was thinking at the end of it. I was like, all the money, all that manpower, all the time that went into making this, and it's just, it's just depressing, you know? So the whole movie is just about, I'm going to get depressed just telling you what it's about, but it's basically about, it starts just with generic, like, war, you know, non war stuff at the beginning, and it's like, okay, what what's going on here? And the whole movie is basically about the, I don't know what they call them, a company, like if the four, five guys or whatever are going to wherever, I mean, is it a company of men, battalion, you know, <laughs> I don't know what it is, but a group of whatever, five of these soldiers, guys, along with like, <laughs> this is John <clears throat> Leguizamo was actually in this movie, I, I was going to say, uh, as opposed to River Wild, if any of you watched that review, I was trying to think of that kid's name, and it was, uh, which of course I forgot, I remember last night, because I jokingly, as I was watching, it was like, oh, there's, and I said the kid from 
uh, River Wild meeting John Leguizamo as a joke, and I was like, ha ha ha, you're funny, and I said thank you. Anyway, it, this movie's really got John Leguizamo versus the kid from Jurassic Park in it, and also John C. <laughs> John C. Riley, who was actually in River Wild as well, and Sean Penn is like the what do they call him, Sarge. Sergeant or whatever, the co in command of the little group of five guys, uh, Joseph Mazzello. That's the kid's name from Jurassic Park and River Wild. So uh, it just follows these guys and they're like, because after this beginning war scene, it's like, we're going to go get laid. We're going to go into town and get laid. You know, we're going to do some, you know, natives, you know. I, I na Yeah, not natives. Well, whatever. We're going to do some women, you know. Con I didn't say I didn't mean to say cunt. I was gonna say country. Oh, I'm really digging myself in a hole. <laughs> country, you know, native, native women of that, native to that land. I don't mean like natives, like with spears and leaves covering their genitals. So, oh man, <clears throat> I'm gonna climb out of the hole here. So. It turns out like they were going to go into town and do some of these women, you know, prostitutes from Vietnamese prostitutes and it's like they got all ready to go in there and screw women and it's like they go over there and it's like, can't go in there. You know, VC's all over the place in there. We don't want no one in there. So basically they are they were denied to go in there and screw women. So that so then like I think Sean Penn comes up with the idea because then they get told that they gotta get sent out and go do this shit or whatever the next day or whatever. So like, you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna kidnap a Vietnamese girl and take it with us. Little portable R and R. That's that's a line from the movie. Portable R and R. So basically, portable woman to rape and shit. Oh man, now I'm gonna start getting depressed as I describe this. So the whole movie is about them kidnapping a woman, a girl out of the freaking you know whatever what they call. I can't remember what they called the little thing they were they sleep in and stuff hutch or something <laughs> and uh <clears throat> they kidnap her out of there and that's bad enough but then later on they freaking rape her and beat her face and so the movie's about these assholes soldiers taking the, it's it says in the beginning of the movie this is based on true story i mean of course you know whether this is actually a true story or not i mean obviously it is anyway i mean this stuff happens it's probably happening right now as I record it, and it's probably happening somewhere around the world as you watch it. And it's just always something like this is always constantly happening, unfortunately. And even if it's not based on something true, I'm sure it, you know, obviously has happened because pretty much everything has happened. And it's just that's why it's depressing to watch because you know it's it's happened and it's happening probably right now in some other country or this country or you know. <clears throat> so. Uh, so the you know they kidnap her, rape her, and you know Michael J. Fox is kind of the the conscience you know of the audience. Hopefully, the guy who uh, you know isn't exactly I would be in the exact same position. Well, I wouldn't be in that position because I wouldn't be in the fucking army or whatever the fuck they're in. I wouldn't be over there. But oh shit, that's back when they drafted you. So maybe I would <laughs> if I. If I <laughs> so. Uh, well, not in my physical. Luckily, I, I wouldn't be able to. So that's one of the advantages about my physical condition. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be able to go, which would have been cool. So to make a long story short, it's depressing. And I guess I was originally had two stars on my mind, but now that I'm thinking about it, we'll go one star and one one and one quarter star or one and three quarter stars. It's just depressing. Um, we'll go one and three quarter stars for casualties of war. It's depressing. And when the movie was over, I'm like, oh, that's what the whole movie's about? Kidnapping a girl and raping her and beating her and then killing her. And then Michael J. Fox, you know, basically presses charges on all these guys and they get sent to prison at the end. See what I mean? About, like, what... Like, who said, yeah, let's make this into a movie and, and, and spend millions and millions of dollars to do it and, and pay for these yeah, at the time, probably, well, I don't know about Sean Penn, but I know Michael J. Fox 
was obviously a big name in 89. I mean, huge. And Sean Penn probably wasn't no chicken little either. <laughs> so that's what I mean about what the... So, if you like move, war movies about shitty soldiers raping innocent people and killing them, you might like... <laughs> I would suggest you get help and then, you know, you don't need to see this movie because you're already sick enough as it is. So, <clears throat> in my opinion. So thanks for watching my casualties of of war review and I wouldn't recommend it. Not not at all. I mean really nothing redeemable about it, you know. Thanks for watching.